Oh, come on. God is good. Amen. All the time. And all the time. God is good. All right. Uh, we're going to open this morning with a, uh, a responsive uh, uh, prayer. And so if uh, Chancellor will go ahead and click the first slide. It opens with, uh, so what we're going to say is, uh, together is, I think that I ask that the God of my Lord Jesus Christ may give to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him today, and that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Next slide. And then I'm going to ask the question, as soon as you re we read that together, I'm going to say, why? And then you're going to say, so that I may know what is the hope of his calling for me. And I'm going to say, why? And you're going to say, so that I may know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in me. And I'm going to say, why? And you're going to say, so that I may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward me. Next slide. And then we're all going to say, let it be so today. Okay? So if we'll go back to the first slide, we're going to say this together. I ask that the God of my Lord Jesus Christ may give to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him today, and that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Why? So that I may know what is the hope of his calling for me. Why? So that I may know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in me. Why? so that I may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward me who believes. Let it be so today. Amen. Brother Ricky's going to come and lead us in an opening prayer. saturate our minds today. Let us praise you with a genuine heart, and let us give all praise and glory unto you, Jesus. And we praise you today. Amen. Grace, what have you done? Murdered for me on that cross. Accused in absence of wrong Our sin washed away in your blood Too much to make sense of it all I know that your love breaks my fall The scandal of grace You died in my place, so oh my soul will live and know to be like you to give all I have just to know you Jesus there's no one beside you forever the hope in my heart where, where is your 
God is good. Amen. Yes, we are supposed to have our first love. Go back to that first love. But don't lose all the history that you have with him. Go back to that first love, that passion, that desire. But don't lose all of that mature love, that growing love, all the history that you've made with him. Every time that he rescued you, every time that he held you in his arms when no one was around, don't lose the history. Forget not all my benefits, says the Lord. So yes, we want that first love, that passion, that desire. But don't lose the mature love. Don't lose the memories, the history that you've made with him. Amen. God is love, right? And it's impossible to walk with him and not love. Now that love can come out in a lot of different ways. Sometimes love is tough love. It's teaching. Sometimes it's just sharing with others around you. Sometimes it's just giving hugs. Word of encouragement. Sometimes it's given monetarily as we're fixing to do here in worshiping the Lord. Just trust Him. His Word says to trust in the Lord. You will talk yourself out of it. Doug would talk himself out of it. He says, trust Him. Trust the Lord when you give. When He prompts you to give, give what He says. His, uh, his Word is so full of uh, blessings and uh, promises that when we obey, He will cause men to give to you. He will have your cup overflowing. And you will just wake up and say, wow, where'd that come from? It only come from you, God. It only come from you because that's, that's the loving father that he is. Now, when we don't obey, love can be tough. And we'll walk through some seasons and wonder why. Why is this happening to me? Why, why is this? Why am I in lack? It's because of my disobedience. But when you obey the Lord, He will withhold nothing from you. He loves us. He desires to bless you. We get to give this morning to missions. And uh, we support many areas of missionary work locally. Uh, when opportunity arises we we love to we love to help individuals we love to help families in ever how we can god whatever resources if it's my labor if it's just my labor and i'm able to do it i want to do it if it's taking a meal to someone that may have had a surgery a family that is struggling whatever that is if it's taking a box of food to someone that's a little short. But it may be just giving uh, finances too. Sometimes that's what he requires. And we can't be in Peru and be here. We can't believe, be in Colombia and be here. Those are two uh, uh, national uh, missions that we serve, pastors in Peru, those churches there that are just like us trying to share the good news with people, trying to encourage people, trying to teach people. Same thing in Colombia, trying to help those children. Uh, so we get to give this morning. I pray that you have already made that. You have already have that prepared before you come. If you haven't, ask him now. God, what would you have me to give this morning? I don't want to be short on what you ask. Because... He knows, he knows what's in my pocket right now. And I don't think he's going to ask me to, he's not a magician, pull out something that's not there. But he knows. He will check your heart. 
Okay, be obedient. So uh, as you get your offerings prepared, these ushers will serve us this morning and, and giving to those areas. It will be for missions today. Father, we thank you because you are love. And you teach us to love. You teach us to love in many different ways. Some of those, some of those ways, they stretch us. They, they make us a little uncomfortable. But it's you. Lord, it's you that we're after. It's your presence. It's your presence. It's you that changes a life. It's you that brings peace to a home, peace to a heart. It's you that supplies every need. And God, we are grateful. We are thankful. If I'm short, I'm going to thank you. If I have plenty, overflowing, I'm going to thank you. And God, we give you that thanks this morning for each and every individual that's sitting here, each and every family, those that are not be able to be with us this morning. Father, we thank you. And we pray blessings over these areas of missions this morning, over, over Columbia. God, just let that overflow. Let them reach more children. Let them reach more families. The same in Peru, God. Let them raise up leaders. Let them raise up pastors and those churches and families. Bless them today. Bless Bethesda today, God. Bless Bethesda. You have blessed us tremendously, but God, we know that you're not finished. We expect to see great things because you're a great God. And you're always working. You're always moving waiting on your people. And Lord, we give you thanks this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you for your giving. Uh, that would be me. Here he comes. We're going to make some announcements this morning uh, for upcoming things here at Bethesda. And uh, Brother Alvin and Sister Sarah have asked, come to me about helping to serve on the outreach. And uh, I'm thankful for that. Doug needs some inspiration. Uh, sometimes a little kick wouldn't hurt. <laughs> and uh, we welcome that. So uh, we have some uh, things coming up here this week. Uh, gifting class tonight at 4 o'clock. Be sure, if you picked up a bulletin, be sure and look at that. Be sure, if you're interested in that, that will be at 4 o'clock this evening. And so... Uh, We'll invite you to that. We'll go have a youth pumpkin patch October the 14th. Uh, meet at the church at 5 p.m. October the 21st, 6.30 uh, to 10, young adult chili cookout. Cook-off, cook-off, yeah, it's cook-off. So young adults, be there. I, I, 
I'm not so young, but I'd like to be there. <laughs> I'm not in the age bracket, but be there to support that and have all kinds of fun and, and invite people to come with you. ICA Walkathon, October 21st. Sponsoring an ICA student today. Amen. Really needs your help. Yes. Uh, Monday, October 23rd at 5.30. This is only for one hour. They give us a one-hour limit. We'll be feeding America. Uh, such a great response. Really stands out for Bethesda. You know, a lot of, I don't know if you've experienced this, you probably have. A lot of places you go, they can't even pronounce Bethesda. That, that's what, how you, how you say that, how you spell that? Bethesda, but we get an overwhelming response there, and that's such a good work, church. Those food boxes go for adults, senior adults, uh, and, and senior homes. Those backpacks go for children after school, and some of the only, the only meal they may get. And wow, I think last week, last month was. Uh, three or four hundred food boxes and those boxes are filled and then maybe fourteen hundred backpacks in an hour uh, that that is awesome praise the Lord that those go out for people so come and join us on that if you if you're available women's gathering but there's a house of mercy Saturday, October 28th, from 12 to 2. I think you got all of you that come would enjoy it and have a fun time. Amen. So now we will do our regular meet and greet. If you will rise up, rise up, go around. Maybe there's someone you didn't get to say hello to this morning. Take that time now.
time. God is good. God is good when? And all the time. All right, if we'll make our way back to our seats. Today is Pastor Appreciation Day, and I'm going to turn it over to Denise, and she'll take it from there. Denise. On? All right. Good morning. Good morning. We do appreciate our, appreciate our pastors, don't we, our elders? So Karen Powell, where are you, Karen? There she is. Everybody look. <laughs> she wrote a poem for me to read to you all today. And it says, Integrity speaks volumes in the world we live today. As we honor and bless our elders, these are the words we wish to say. We want to thank you guys for all the many things you do, such, a cover, such as covering us in prayer and being there to see us through. Each one of you have your own unique personalities and, and style. That's true. Some are loud, some are quiet, but we know you'd be there to help us every mile. As elders, you're held to a higher standard and each one prays for the other. There's nothing equal to the love you have for all your brothers. You watch over us when the storms come and when the devil wants to get us down. You're ready to help us stomp him under our feet and let him know he's not welcome in our town. The monkey business book says leaders have to have a servant's heart. As each try to do all you can, as you each try to do all you can to help your neighbors by doing your part. You each study to show yourself approved by listening when God speaks his word so true. Sometimes you tell us what we might not want to hear, but trusting your guidance is what we learn to do. We know as Christians we sometimes fail, fall and fail to do our best, but each one of you have our backs and pray that we stand the test. We never want to take for granted all the ways you look out for us behind the scenes. You teach us, you guide us, and encourage us by truth and all means. So before you guys let your head swell with pride, we want to recognize the wives that stand by you. For without each one of them, you couldn't do what you do. So thank you, elders, today and every day for the sacrifices you make, big and small. We wanted to share this with you and tell you we love you one and all. Boy, I get to, got to lick my chops when I got the word that I get to speak this about Pastor Jerry. <laughs> First thing coming to my mind was, many of you may not know this, but the older ones remember uh, Dean Martin's roast. So I, t I told Jackie this morning, I said, let me at him. <laughs> but all, all, serious, <laughs> all seriousness aside, this is what really came to mind as I uh, was reading God's word. What is a mighty man? Many of us may think, uh, have our own definition of what a mighty man is. But this stands true for so many of our elders, each and every one. But this really touched my heart when it came to mind for Jerry. Because this is truly the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. God speaks through Jeremiah this way. Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. 
that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. When I read this, and then Pastor Jerry, I was given the privilege and the honor to say these things about Pastor Jerry. He is truly, in each and every one of these men, these elders, and their families, they're truly just. And how Jeremiah puts it, as a mighty man of God should be. And he is, Jerry is one of my truest and best friends. He's not always been, how do you put it, just a friend. He's been a big brother and he's never backed down from helping me through so many things that I've encountered in my life. And he's brought so much of God's wisdom toward me. And I can't just say it about Jerry, I truly, each and every one of these elders, they mean that to me. So as you, as you go through the day, think about what a mighty man is to you and let the Lord speak to your mind. And with that, I love you, Pastor Jerry. You're one of my best friends I've ever had. Thank you. Well said, Ricky. Thank you for uh, giving us an opportunity to lift up our elders. Thank you, elders, for being who you are and your calling in life and serving. But I get to address Pastor Doug Spainhauer. And I really prayed about it and said, Lord, what do you want me to say? And he reminded me of one of the first times I met Pastor Doug, and it was at a state conference in Louisville, Kentucky. I was a youth pastor then, and I had a bunch of youth there that were doing drama ministry and stuff like that. And the kids came to me and said, hey, this guy's asking us to help serve with this food stuff in the back. Do you remember this, Doug? If you don't know Doug, he kind of likes to wing it sometimes and gets it done. What would Doug do? You know, that's what I was thinking. So, so as, as the kids are coming to me, and I think he might have come to me, and yeah, we'll help serve. We'll volunteer. Heck yeah. And we had Highland Park there with us. They were doing some ministry with us and stuff. And uh, some of them guys were like, yeah, man, we're going back here and help. Doug made it sound like we were going to be moving a little bit of food to help and as I walk back, it's a semi-truck. And I'm like, we still have like two to four hours of, of the service left. There's no way we're... Anyways, uh, his heart was, was as true then as it is now. And it only took us two or three hours to get it done. And by the time we got done, the service was pretty much closing. Uh, and our youth in Highland Park were covered in sweat from head to toe. It was 90-something degrees outside in a truck hand stacking all of it off. We had a dolly, but we didn't have a forklift, so it was all hand stacked, a full tractor trailer. And at that point, I thought, man, I really, I really don't like this guy that much, but <laughs> kind of crossed my mind. But in the end, um, as I got to know Doug in his heart, he has welcomed me and my family uh, to E-Town as we made our transition here. I uh, opened his doors to his home. He fed us. He loved us. He helped guide us in situations. He took my kids on, which is a handful in itself. Uh, but it wasn't just me. It's anybody that came to Bethesda. He accepted them into their, their home with his wife, Renata. Pray for you, Renata, all the time. But his kids and Pastor Doug has led the way on how church should be done in the home. Opening his doors, feeding families, praying with them, giving them God's word, giving them God's counsel through the scripture. Uh, and it wasn't just me that he's touched, but it's, it's many people. And I strive to be like that, too. I could do more. But in the end, Doug has loved my family as he has many families. And we appreciate that from Pastor Doug. Um, so from there, of not knowing him that well and thinking, man, this guy, got, he pulled the cover over my eyes. To now, I, I can say that I know his heart is for the Lord and it's for the people. It's for the lost. It's for all. And he displays that in his life, and I appreciate you, and I love you for that. Thank you, Doug. Well, I get the privilege of speaking something about Pastor Fred Jones, and uh, I, get to, I get to serve beside Pastor Fred. Uh, he's a great man. I mean, I love him to death. I mean, talk about having, if you want somebody in your corner, that'll fight for you, 
and keep you on the straight and narrow, it'd be Pastor Fred. A little bit about Pastor Fred, a lot of you know he was a Marine, still a former Marine, still Marine. But anyways, he'll always be at heart. But anyways, uh, his job was to recruit people into the Marines. And he has, since he's been out, I've, I've seen what the Lord's done in his life, how the Lord, he, had, he was devoted to the Marines while he was in, but now he's dedicated spiritually to recruiting young, to recruit men through every man a warrior. And the program that he's leading, it, he puts the same devotion he had to this country into, the, into us as men in this church and beyond this church. I mean, his, his reach, if he could, would be the whole nation. He, he would reach out to spread this about every man a warrior because that's where his heart is, because that's how good a program this is. And uh, <clears throat> just serving beside him, I, I've seen, I haven't been here that long. He's been here longer than I have. But when I first met Pastor Fred, before his Pastor Fred, and he was still a Marine, we didn't click. We didn't hit on all the cylinders together. It, it, was, it was different. But I watched God as, as he transitioned out of the military and just, back into civilian world, how the Lord just gripped him. And uh, just, he, he's a man after God's heart. Like, in everything he does, is this what God wants for me? And, and, and is this what God wants for other men? And that's what he goes for. And I just really appreciate him and love him and his dedication uh, and his service he had to this nation. And it, it will always be spiritually one team, one fight for the kingdom of God. And I just appreciate Pastor Fred. So, I love you. All right. I get the privilege of Pastor Sean, uh, a friend, brother-in-law, uh, most importantly, mentor and pastor. But for me, I'm not the best at uh, public speaking. You guys can call me Moses if you want. Not, please don't actually do that. But uh, let's see. I got some stuff written down. Okay. Pastor Sean, thank you for being such a great person. You're the type of man that all the youth boys should look up to. You are the example, Proverbs 6.6. 6. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. As in, you are the hard worker, the ant, of course. You want, you want something done, you take care of it. You are such as the pond at your house. And even as you are hard at work, you show the example of Proverbs 27.17. Iron sharpens iron. And one man sharpens another. And I see you mentor others, even while, even when and while, you're exhausted with working. You are also an example of Psalms 23, 4. And it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. You are one with me, even your rod and staff, they come for me. A fearless leader. An example of that is uh, when they were at camp, he heard a little rustling in the floor near his bag. And a, uh, a mouse jumped at him, and, grabbed, and he grabbed his things and took off right outside and slept on his car. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but but no, uh, the, uh, the growth I've seen from when you, when you arrived pulling up on the hoverboard in the gym to now preaching your own messages is inspiring. So thank you. Well, I'm with Chancellor. I don't like speaking in front of people, so I'm probably going to forget everything I wanted to say. But I have the privilege of speaking to Pastor Doug and, and Kimberly. Um, got here in 2009. I've known you guys since then. And all I can say is that I love you guys very much. Um, your heart that you have for people, I mean, your pastoral gift is, is very evident. Uh, perfect choice for the outreach team, people that need hope, need help, need to be loved into the kingdom, you guys do that. So I really appreciate you guys. Um, and yeah, I, I always forget everything I want to say when I get into the, into the groove of things, but I love you all very much, um, and I appreciate everything you do. Brother Payne, I'm going to be saying some words about you, how much I appreciate you. Brother Payne, you are such an encouragement to me and everyone in this church. And 
it is so cool to see the love that you have for the Lord after all these years and how faithful and how dedicated you are. That's very encouraging to me. You have worked very hard for the kingdom in all these years, and it's just, it's a privilege to see how the Lord has blessed you and has kept you. And just looking back, I wish I had the privilege of being in one of your sermons because I heard, I heard you brought the fire. I heard you brought the word. But it's very cool uh, seeing you now in the work that you still, you still do for the, for the kingdom. And you are such a bright light to me and everyone around you. And I'm just very thankful for you. And I'm praying favor over you and your family. I'm praying health over you and your family and blessings. And I just thank you and I love you, Brother Payne. Let's just stand and give them all a round of applause. Just so much that we could just continue to bring so many, you know, people could just line around this whole building and continue to just say so many good things about our elders because we have the best. And um, I've been to a few churches, so I can truly say that. I feel like that I've found the best, and that's why we're not leaving. So um, anyways, we do love you. Hope that you guys all by now truly know that. (laughs) We wouldn't have to do this every year for you guys to know that. We know that you guys feel it. Um, We hope that you feel it every single day. And if you don't, then we got to step up our game because we are not doing a good job. So (laughs) I think that I think that they feel it. So um, we have a few more things for you all. And um, we hope that you all brought your if I didn't send enough uh, calls out (laughs) recently to remind you. I hope that you all brought your uh, little gifts for the elders. And so we're going to pass out to all of the wives a vase. And the kids can get ready. We're going to have the kids come and give all of the elders and their wives a special gift and a treat. So one second, Rachel, let me get these handed out. Okay, the kids are going to come through first, and they are going to give their gifts, and then everybody else in the congregation can get their cards and follow right through with them, and we are all going to give the letters that we've, the cards that we've written. So don't be shy. We can start around this side, or let's see. Let's just, Mom, let's just go here, and we'll start around. So everyone can follow around this side. Okay, don't be shy. Come around. Start at Pastor Fred's side and we'll just come through. So what we did was every, we handed out some cards. And we wanted you guys to have some encouragement throughout the times that maybe you're down or maybe you're struggling with something. We just wanted you guys to be able to pull out the cards and um, just be able to read them and remind yourselves that you are loved, be encouraged, and just feel loved. So go ahead.
Uh, yes, thank you very much. So good morning and welcome to Bethesda. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we've already felt the Lord here this morning. Uh, as we were singing earlier, you know, I just want to sit here at your feet, right? I'm caught up in this holy moment and I never want to leave. And so uh, today uh, we're just going to do a quick review to kind of make the flow go. So coming in the next week, I believe it's Pastor Fred will be preaching. And uh, uh, so we're going to take a few minutes here. And so last week we talked about, our main topic was, oh, I got the clicker, sorry. I forgot. Our main topic was, if it works, it's not. Can you advance it? There we go. What is your purpose for being here? And so we talked about that and we went through that and we talked about how God has a purpose for all of us from the moment that we were created. And even before we were born, at the very beginning of creation, God gave man a purpose. And so with that, we had some learnings and we're just going to do a quick review. And so uh, the three questions are that we covered last week are, I did not come from blank ooze. I did not, I was made with a blank, and I was made, I know that my creator has a blank for me. Okay, give you a few minutes to think about that, see if you can remember. I did not come from, they all three begin with P. I kind of did that as to have alliteration so that we, you all could catch on it. I did not come from blank, beginning with a P, ooze. Uh, I was made with P, wait, wait, don't say the word yet, somebody may not know. I know that my creator has a blank for me. Okay, give you about five seconds to see if you stir up them old brain cells. See what they were. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, if we'll go to the next slide. It says, I did not come from primordial ooze. Can we say that real loud? I did not come from that's right. I was made by a creator. I was made with a purpose. That's right. And I know that my creator has a plan. That's right. Got a plan for me. Okay. Uh, still not work. Oh, there we go. So what do you do when you want to know the purpose of an item? This was a question we asked last week also. You know, remember, if you remember, I had my, uh, what some thought was a can opener, but it wasn't a can opener or a keychain. It was actually a back scratcher. And so you can't, sometimes you can't judge by looking at something what its purpose is. And so what do we do when we want to know the purpose of something? Well, we can either A, ask the item, B, ask other items, C, uh, the items can form a committee and decide. You know, that can happen. D, you ask the creator of the item, or E, you wander about aimlessly guessing using trial and error. That's sometimes our most favorite method. So think on that. Which was the answer? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? Give you about three seconds to process that. Three, two, one. Okay. And oh, the answer is D. What do you do when you want to know the purpose of an item? You ask the creator of the item. The item doesn't know what it was made, what its purpose was, or what it was. The other items around it don't know. You know, your best friend don't know, unless they're the one that made it. Only the creator knows the purpose of the item. And so with that, we turn to the scripture and uh, to see what the creator said. Because he tells us in his manual what the purpose is. And he says... Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. So who created man? God. Who's the creator? God. That's why we're talking about him and we're asking him what our purpose is. And in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that lives on the earth. Next slide. 
So in that, God gave us what our purpose was. It, our purpose was to have dominion. And there was a, the phrase, go back one slide there. There's a phrase there, let's see if this works, that kind of caught my eye. Because we tell the story of how God created man, and then he makes man, but we miss this, it's just three little words there that we often jump over. That the world really doesn't want you to see. The world doesn't want you to see that not only did he, one, they don't even want you to see that he made you, but they really don't want you to see that he blessed them. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was before Jesus came. They couldn't be blessed. Because we had to wait around some 4,000 years before Jesus could be blessed, before we, Jesus came, so before we could be blessed. Sometimes that's what we think. That's not true. Everything that God made, he made with a purpose. And if it fulfills his purpose, God blesses it. He blessed man, even from the beginning. And you say, next slide. So what does it mean to be blessed by God? What do those three little words mean? And I, and I just picked some verses here that we're going to cover real quick to give you an example of who you are. Not only do you have purpose, not only do you, is there a plan for you, but believe it or not, you've been blessed. God, the creator of everything, has blessed you. He has. We, if we listen to the world, well, we came from primordial ooze. We were here, we were there, this happened, this happened, and you're just worthless. You're nothing. You're evil. Blah, 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 blah. We don't learn that. He made us, he loves us, and he's blessed us. And so, next slide. So to me, what does it mean when it says we are blessed to God? It's when God says, do not worry about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Don't worry about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap. They're not farmers. They don't, you, don't see, you have never seen a bird, not even on TikTok, with a hoe, have you? Digging the ground, planting seeds, watering it. You have never seen a bird. If you have that, bring it to me and then I'll show you. It's, it's uh, deep faked. It is not real. Birds don't do that yet. Right? They don't gather in the barns yet. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they are? Which of you, by worrying, can even make yourself taller, right? Which of us can do anything with that? Next slide. It's when God says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, meaning they don't work. They don't spin. They don't sit at a, a loom and make clothing for themselves. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? It's when he says, I am blessed if I say, the Lord is my refuge, and I will make the most high my dwelling. No harm will overtake me. No disaster will come near my tent, for he will command his angels concerning me to guard me in all my ways. And they will lift me up in their hands, so that I will not strike my foot against the stone. And I will tread on the lion and the cobra. I will trample the great lion and the serpent. Next slide. And I am blessed because no weapon formed against me will prosper. Amen. And I will refute every tongue that accuses me. Let, let's say that one again. I am blessed because no weapon formed against me will yeah. prosper. Yeah, right. And I will refute every tongue that accuses me. Next slide. And I am blessed because God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I am so blessed because God did not send his son into the world to condemn me, but to save me through him. I am blessed, not just today, not just yesterday, but from the beginning. Next slide. And I am blessed because Jesus had compassion and he touched my eyes and immediately my eyes received sight. We talk about how he did that with the blind in, in the New Testament in the days when he was on earth, but he did the same to us. We were blind, not aware of what was going on or, around us. And he came and touched us and let us see. Next slide. And I am blessed because Christ sits at the right hand of God and he makes intercession for me. Wait a minute, what we just read? We've read that God so loved, the, he blessed us. He had so loved the world that he sent his son. And not only does his son reach out and make me to see, but he also stand, sits, stands at the right hand of the Father and makes intercession for me. Jesus didn't come at one point in time and then just leave. He is here eternally so that I may receive the blessing of the Lord. Next slide. And it's not only the Christ, but I'm also blessed because the Spirit, it also helps me in my weakness. For when I don't know what to pray, but the Spirit himself does what? Makes intercession for me with groanings that cannot be uttered. Not only does he have his Son come and stand at his side so that he can make intercession for me, his spirit comes and does that too. Even when in my flesh, I don't know what to say. I don't know about you, but there have been times I don't know what to say. Sometimes it really is just, oh God, oh God. And the spirit intercedes for me. I don't know about you, but that's blessed. Next slide. And I am blessed because the kingdom of heaven is here. See, we may not catch that. If we watch the news, we think all this turmoil, we think we'll even say it sometimes, well, this world is the Satan's and we just got to, no, no, no. Jesus came preaching. What did he come preaching? What did he tell the disciples to preach? The kingdom of God, Old English, at hand. The kingdom of God, New English, is here. I am here. Your king has returned. I have sent the Holy Spirit who's going to make intercession. He's going to teach you what? All truth. He's going to guide you in all truth so that you don't live in the lies that the world has for you. That you're not caught up in the conspiracies of this world. That you're not caught up and tossed to and fro on every wind of doctrine by cunning men who are just trying to mess you up. He says, no, the kingdom's here. I'm here. You're blessed. Next slide. Everything that God made is able to do the function that it was intended to do. We don't see that. You guys can come because we're going to wrap it up. Sometimes we don't see that. We're like, well, give me 50 years and I'll be there. I'll be able to do something for him. I'll be able to reach out. I'll be able to help. I'll be able to give me some time. Give me, give me something. Where I'm at is not sufficient. How many fish have you seen? I know they're in schools. But how many fish have you seen with a chalkboard being taught how to swim? How many, I mean, how many giraffes running along, you know, stop and say, okay, guys, hey, we don't know how to be a giraffe today. Let's, let's do something. How many animals, bugs, critters, I mean, 
cockroaches, right? Cockroaches, they just know where to go find food, whether you want them to or not. That's what they do. The bugs, little roly polies, I don't know what you all call them, but they kind of roll up on themselves. I've never seen them. Not roll out of roll. Not roll out of roll. I, I've never seen that. I have never seen that. I mean, I've seen them since I was a kid. Never. And yet we stand, the, the creation that is in his image, and we sometimes act like we really don't know what we're doing. I can't do anything. I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. It's a guess. I'll tell you what, I'll go ask somebody else that don't know. And they'll tell me something, right? But that won't be true either, because I'll try that. Then I stumble and fall. And I go, well, I don't know what it was. When all we have to do is get with the Creator and understand you do have a purpose. And He has enabled you to fulfill it. Yeah. As I, He even says this in the Scripture. As I am faithful in one thing, what's he going to do? Reward me and make me faithful in many things, right? But he never says, well, you can't do anything. Well, what we do sometimes, like, Lord, give me the many before I can even do the one. But if you're a loving parent, a father or a mother, do you put your kids in positions where you know they'll fail? No. If they can't handle the one, am I going to give them the many things to do? And if we being earthly fathers know how to give good gifts, how much more so does our heavenly father? He's not. He's going to lead us through the process. But in everything He puts us in, He will have equipped you to be successful. He doesn't put you in things to fail. His will, He says it. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is nobody like me. I know the end from the beginning. And my pleasure is going to be accomplished life, wherever I put you, you're going to be successful. I'm going to put you there. You're going to learn some things. It's going to be, you see, what's well, hard. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's the only way you grow. It's going to be a little rough, but I'm going to be with you. You're going to learn that, you know what? In your weakness, I made strong Why? Because of you. You're there. You're equipped. You just got to go do it. Our purpose is to dominate. Man will have dominion, not to be dominated. Our purpose is to dominate. You're not to be dominated by pick a vice, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, smoke, chew, or go out with girls that do, right? Any of those, right? None. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. Nothing is to enslave you. Nothing. You are to dominate. He wants you to be a winner. He has created you. We learned last time. From the beginning you're, of your life, you've been a winner. Nothing is to dominate you. And your job is to extend His kingdom to the rest of this world. Next slide. As the scripture says, freely you have received, freely give. And so they're going to sing this song as we stand, as we exit for this. So in summary, so today what we've covered is what the world tells you who you are is not true. It's not true where you come from. It's not who made you. It doesn't say what your state is world don't know. Why? Because the world's not your creator. Your creator, however, says, I have made you for a purpose. I have enabled you with everything that you need. 
I have equipped you with all that you need at this moment, and I'm continuing to equip you. Now go and do it. I gave it to you freely. Every one of those blessings we covered, he gave to me. He healed my eyes, opened them freely. The Spirit comes freely. Jesus intercedes for me, and it costs me Stand, they're gonna lead us into a song and we'll be dismissed after that.